Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, the Green Party is uh, very happy to be supporting this uncontroversial and very reasonable bill, which will internalise some of the enforcement costs associated with international travel, particularly around biosecurity. And last year there were almost 30,000 flights uh, into New Zealand, and they brought in, amongst other things, four and a half million people. So, obviously, as an island nation, our international air links are incredibly important to our relations with the world uh, and our economic prosperity. But equally, as the previous speaker has pointed out, biosecurity is one of the most significant economic issues in New Zealand. So we do need to be vigilant uh, about biosecurity to protect uh, our primary production base from introduced pests and species. And I, I think one of the great advantages of our primary production sector over the rest of the world is our relative freedom from numerous pests and diseases. And so obviously we strongly uh, support the notion of taking stronger measures to maintain this status by having strict border security, quarantine and internal biosecurity capacity. But it is ironic, as the previous speaker mentioned, that on the one hand we're taking all these extremely vigilant and very worthwhile steps at, the, at airports uh, to protect our biosecurity, and on the other hand, where, with the other hand, the government is um, eliminating 54 staff from biosecurity. And equally, because of our obsession with free trade, while we're very, very vigilant at our airports, uh, we are extremely lax in other areas. And I'm thinking, for example, that we're, about to, we're, we're considering bringing in Australian honey into New Zealand, even though it's completely unnecessary. We don't need it. We have a wonderful uh, honey industry in New Zealand. Uh, we have no need for this imported Australian honey. And we know that this imported Australian honey may harbour new diseases and quite devastating diseases which could be a precursor to colony collapse disorder, which we know is ki killing bees on a massive scale all around the world. So we are prepared to bring in some completely unnecessary product like Australian honey, and we know that some, well, quite a bit of Australian honey, they, they have imported honey from China and other places coming into Australia, being mixed with Australian honey. We know they have diseases in Australia that we don't have here. I think one's called the Israeli paralytic something or other. They have sort of strange names. But anyway, um, it is. It's got a very strange name. They have these diseases. But we are prepared to bring in this unnecessary product, uh, well, God knows why, that could result in the wiping out of bees in New Zealand. How absurd is that? Then, of course, we have... We're allowing all these imported carcass, frozen pork carcasses uh, to come into New Zealand, even though we know uh, that they may bring in new diseases. And indeed, we think that that is why, um, why we, the, one of those diseases came in uh, through the imported frozen carcasses, which Australia won't allow, but we allowed to come into New Zealand uh, because we have this obsession with free trade, I presume, and we're not prepared to stand up. Then, of course, last year we had, um, we got, we had a disease came in and devastated uh, tomato, uh, the tomato production in New Zealand. Uh, so that was, and, and um, there are suspicions as to how uh, that got in, but it may very well have got in through some of the uh, imported produce that we allow into New Zealand. And, of course, it's interesting that we, uh, we import, um, I think it's, three and a half billion dollars worth of food into New Zealand, vast quantities of, uh, of, of fruit and vegetables in New Zealand, and uh, there are concerns that the, uh, the disease that affected the potatoes and tomatoes in such a devastating way last year, uh, there are concerns that that came in uh, through some of the imported produce that, was, that we allow so freely into New Zealand uh, and with not sufficient uh, adequate controls. So the relevance to this bill, which some of the National Party members were agitating about, is that wh why would it be that on the one hand we're so stringent and rigid at our airports, which we think is a fantastic thing, we strongly support it, but why, on the other hand, would we be so lax 
with so many other uh, produce that's coming into New Zealand that um, can bring in these devastating diseases uh, which um, can um, uh, devastate whole sectors of our primary produce uh, as they already have the disease with it affecting the, uh, the tomatoes, the potatoes that came in uh, in the last few years. Now we've got the prospect of something, a disease coming in that might devastate our honey. We've had the pork disease coming in uh, and the most likely cause is our frozen pork. And meantime, we're busily cutting 54 staff from biosecurity uh, at the same time. So it doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but nevertheless, we are pleased that at least at our airports, um, where we don't have to worry about free trade with other countries. Uh, we are allowed to have strict aviation security and uh, this bill will allow that same uh, strict biosecurity in new international airports and it will internalise some of those uh, enforcement uh, costs and it will also reduce the government's exposure to liability in relation to processing of travellers. So we think that is fair, but uh, in conclusion we would hope that the very strict uh, rules around biosecurity which are envisaged in this bill uh, will uh, actually uh, pertain to other areas uh, in New Zealand, particularly that we will be more vigilant about the vast amount of uh, produce coming into New Zealand and the ability that it has to bring in uh, diseases uh, that will devastate our uh, primary production sector.